Yeah. Can you really run a carburetor on top of an M90 blower? Let's find out. Hello everybody, I'm Rich Holder and welcome to the channel. The question for today, what happens if you do this? <laughs> That's right. What happens if you take a four inch piece of aluminum tubing, weld it on top of the M90 supercharger and then proceed to drill a four inch hole through the top of the M90 supercharger? What happens? Does the welding actually warp the housing? Uh, yes, it does. Can we fix the housing after we warp the housing? I kind of think so. And the question now is, does it make any power? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Okay guys, here's the situation. We wanna run a carburetor on this. Come on, <laughs> you know how we do it. So we wanna take this, put it on top, and then we'll mount the carburetor on top of that. So we had this welded, Jason over JT Fab did this. <laughs> this is a little bit of a problem. Big change in the difference of thickness for the materials. Obviously this uh, casting's got a lot of porosity and stuff, but we've got other issues here. Now that it's welded on there and ready to go. So this is welded on. Then they hole saw it out the center. Flip this over, you can see. There are, however, <laughs> some high spots on here. As we can see, what I'm doing is grinding them down so we can get the rotor pat to fit back in there, slide in and actually spin around. And yes, I know this is gonna be a problem. It's not gonna seal, yada, yada, yada. We're just trying to find out if it will even work. So what I'm gonna do is grind down these areas so the rotor pack will go in and spin freely and try to make some boost. Needless to say, there's a lot of grinding, a lot of test fitting, a lot of grinding, a lot of test fitting, and a lot of grinding, and even more test fitting to finally get it right. Moment of truth. Does it spin? Uh-oh. So it's a moment of truth after all the porting. All the rotors slide in there. Will they spin? Yeah, not hitting. Whoa, building boost, building boost. Whoa. See all the happiness? Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna try our <laughs> Super Richie carbureted N90. So we need to remove the one that we ran with fuel injection and also with the carburetor up in the elbow. And then we need to install our other Super Richie with our fingers crossed, making sure I hope that the rotor doesn't touch the housing. We did all the clearancing and I'm hoping that everything's okay, but you never know because we're not, when we spin this thing, we're just spinning it by hand. We're not putting any heat in it. We're not putting any RPM into it. So I got my fingers crossed. I don't really care about the blower, but I'd like it not to take out this L33 5.3 liter, which is becoming one of my favorite motors because it's run, run after run after run after run. And we make lots of power, lots of cams, lots of blowers, lots of turbos, all that stuff. And it's been a really good soldier right from the wrecking yard. So let's go ahead and take this blower off and install the Super Richie. Yeah. Okay, got our carburetor mounted. Our Wilson spacer. It's a tapered four hole combo, I think. We've got a 650 Holly Ultra XP. Got our little four inch opening. <laughs> the blower, fingers crossed. Right now we have a sock pulley on it because that was pressed onto the hub. Got our drive assembly. Big exhaust. See, so we've got our fuel lines hooked up to it. I had to make a Cover plate for this.
carburetor on there, got top going into the blower, but we made a few preliminary runs, and right now it's actually a little bit on the lean side. It's actually in the 13s. So we want to bring the air fuel down by a, a full point at least. Right now it's not making a lot of boost because that pulley size is only 103 or 4 kPa. So just barely kind of sneaking into the boost of this 3.8. But we're going to go ahead and do a jet change and see what happens. Okay guys, let's jump right in. <laughs> Obviously, the Super Richie blower combination with the carburetor on top of it did indeed work. And I was very, sur very surprised, honestly. It seemed like a good idea. And I thought, well, let's just put the carburetor on top of there. You know, the carburetor runs on top of lots and lots of different these root style blowers. But what about the M90? Is it going to work? And as it turned out, it did, but not without a lot of effort. You see, welding that thing on there definitely distorted the case. And we had to do a lot, when I say we, I mean me, I had to do a lot of um, grinding with basically, you know, we had a porting tool just like you do with cylinder heads and a lot of cartridge rolls and um, a lot of the carbide bits of designed obviously specifically for aluminum. So I had to take off a lot of material. And the thing that amazed me about how well this worked was the fact that all of the material that I took off, I mean, we cut a four inch hole in the, in the top of the blower but after porting all of this stuff, the clearances were nowhere near, even all the way across. Anybody that knows anything about blowers would have looked at this and said, there's no way that that's going to work. There's no way the clearances are right. You know, they're going to be, you're going to have all kinds of low spots and high spots and all kinds of stuff. And it's just not going to work. But, and yet the blower spins around, it makes boost. It does all the things that you're, it's supposed to do. So it worked out very well. So our test combination was our aluminum 5.3 liter, the L33 from the wrecking yard. It had the trick flow ported heads on it from Brian Truly Racing, the ASCAS heads that were ported. It also had an Elgin cam in it, which was a Sloppy Sage 1 560 lift. 216, 220 at 50 and 114 degree lobe separation angle. I do want to point out that these Brian Tully Racing valve covers that I put on here made life a lot easier with all the cam changes because we could take off the valve cover without taking the coil packs off and they had provisions for AN fitting so that I could I could mount my um, breathers going out to the back of the motor. It just turned out a lot easier. Um, but our combination was run good. We ran a 650 Holly with this thing. We were controlling the timing using our Holly HP management system, made life easy. So run with our blower and the carburetor. We, we made 426 horsepower and 395 foot pounds of torque. Naturally, and this was with the big 3.8 inch pulley, the stock pulley. And we all naturally ran other pulley sizes as well. So here's what happened. We ran a three inch pulley. You know, lots more power as we would expect. And with a 2.6 pulley, the we, we gained a lot of power down low, but it looks like at the top we were definitely getting into belt slippage problems. And it's something I'm going to address uh, later on. And we're going to get into a point where we could just run this thing all the way out. But pulleys make more power as we would expect. The carburetor was still working and functioning right. What I want to show you now is let's take a look at some of the tuning that I did on the carburetor because we did jet changes and we did air bleed changes. But what I want to do is show you what happens with the changes in air fuel when we made those changes to the Super Ritchie carbureted M90. I wanted to give you a quick rundown on the tuning that we did on this combination with the carburetor. Obviously taking a 650 Holley Ultra XP out of the cabinet and putting it on this particular combination, the Super Richie modified M90 blower uh, from a V6 on our V8. Uh, obviously, you know, it's not gonna be ideal. And so what we did was I just ran it the way that it was. And then we, after we run it and make a pull, we adjust accordingly. Now this thing for our supercharged combination, even though it was making very little boost with the 3.8 inch pulley, um, it still was very, very lean. So what we needed to do is adjust it. I want to show you what happened. We actually didn't change power dramatically by making these changes, but we did make it much, much safer and we would not want to run the motor 
for any length of time running at this lens. You can see if we start off, it's as we on the load in at near 3000 RPM, it's over 14 to one. So it's not even really, you know, this is where you'd want to be under cruise. When we, uh, you know, release the motor and we get the thing going, it drops down, you know, right at 13 to one, but it's hovering at 13.25 for most of the run and then dips back down to 13. This is not what you'd want in a supercharged combination. And we want to make it nice and rich and safe before we would start adding boost. And that's exactly what we did. So here's what happened when we did our first change on our carburetor. What I did was we changed the jets. We added four jets to the primary and four jets to the secondary. And for the guys that are keeping score, we went from a 7278 combination to a 7682 combination on the jets. And you could see it richened things up quite a bit. Uh, we were still at 1275 down as down as rich as 1250 or 1240. And I'd like it to be even richer than that if we're talking about a boosted combination. So what we did this time is we wanted to just change the you know air fuel out where we were making power so we did a high speed air bleed change and we saw another significant change the this particular carburetor had 40 air bleeds in it which is kind of unusual so we went down to 23s and we richened it up even more down at 12 and even dipping down into the 11.7 range, which is kind of where we would want it, given that it had very little boost. The other thing that happens here on, you can see the tip in is still kind of, or still kind of lean. It's 12.8 or 12.9 on the roll in, and we would need to adjust that. We could spend more time with maybe squirters and power valves. But actually, the way that I cured this, and you guys will be seeing this in the next video where we ran a carburetor going into and feeding the stock throttle body, we did some changes where we ran it fuel injected, we ran it carbureted, and we ran it with a combination of fuel injection and carburetion, which we were able to kind of cure this problem. You'll see that coming up in the next video. Armature Holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I don't recommend anybody duplicating the Super Richie combo, but if you want to put a carburetor on the M, 90 it can work